Hey folks, it's Art Wolf. Welcome. One of my favorite game series is the great campaigns of the American Civil War. So I was a bit put out when the latest installment failed to arrive. That tale has now been told elsewhere, and today we have the happy task of unboxing Hood Strikes North, the Tennessee campaign, fall 1864. Uh, latest in what, like I said, one of my favorite game series, The Great Campaigns of the American Civil War. This is a Joe Balkowski design. Joe returns to the series as a designer for the first time in many years. So we, this is in the standard, standard for really only multi-man, uh, one and a half inch multi-man box. On the one hand, um, I think this is actually the right size box for this particular game because it's relatively small. Um, Multi-Man also re releases uh, a lot of games in this size box that really should be in a two or three inch box, but uh, this should fit uh, fit harmoniously into one box. Plus, I have my system markers for Great Campaigns of the Civil War in their own external box to be organized there. So I won't have a problem getting everything that I need to get back into this box into this box. So let us open her up and see what we get. Let's see, try not to stab either myself or wreck the box, which is nice. I also do like um, the new trade dress. It's not really new now. They've been doing games in this box style for some time, starting with uh, uh, Battle of the Clouds, which was actually my first Great Campaigns of the American Civil War game. Um, so let's see what we get here. We have a die. Let's see, well, let's see what the card says. Hood Strikes North contains a box and a lid, one 22 by 34 inch map, two counter sheets, one GCACW 1.4 series rulebook, one Hood Strikes North rulebook, five player aid cards, and two dice. So there should be another die in here somewhere. If there isn't, I don't care particularly. So let's take a look. We have first the Hood Strikes North game specific rules. Uh, this is, as it says on the slip, a 40-page book on a glossy paper. Um, it's not a magazine style. I mean, I guess if it's a magazine style glossy paper, it's, a, it's like a super thick paper. Um, it looks like it will wear very well. I personally prefer a matte finish, but uh, the later, later schemes in the series have always had this uh, glossier paper. So let's take a look at... This is weird, actually, because for GCACW in particular, I, I'm actually almost inclined to do the rule book last when I go through this stuff, because I want to get into the specifics of the scenarios. So let's look, first of all, at the basic game rules for Hood Strikes North. And it looks like we have a page and a half yeah, maybe somewhere between a page and a half and two pages, and then we get right into the scenarios. So we have scenario one, Here Come the Rebels. This is a one-turn scenario uh, with quite a modest number of pieces on here. Um, we have, what? what is the total number of scenarios? It looks like eight basic scenarios and one advanced scenario. Advanced scenario, in this context at least, means um, campaign. Now, the, you're going to find that with the exception of the one-turn scenarios where there are certain artifacts that can occur in a GB, GCACW game of, that's only one turn long because there's only one turn, you don't have to worry about the next turn. Other than that, some of these, uh, a lot of the other uh, basic game scenarios are, are going to be very much worth playing and will give you a really great experience even though they are not extended campaigns. And, you know, it'll take you a little while to play through a seven-turn campaign unless you're really fast at it. Or unless you're playing with, like, a, a, like a tournament in a tournament environment. Uh, the, the tournament that runs, I don't want to call it a tournament necessarily, but the events that run at Winter Offensive, for example, are, are expedited by people who are really good at this and keep the game moving very, very quickly. Um, so the race for Columbia is seven turns, uh, and this is November 23rd to 29th of 1864. This is, of course, John Bell Hood attempts an 1864 invasion of Tennessee. The Battle of Nashville is, is uh, something that occurs in this particular campaign, and he is eventually chased back out of Tennessee. Um, scenario three, A Great Chance Was Lost, which is a two-turn scenario. I think the one and maybe two turn scenarios are, are almost invariably very good learning scenarios. Um, 
so we're also clear because there's been some talk about Hood Strikes North that is is not in fact based in reality. Um, this is positioned as an introductory game to the GCACW series, but that's only because it's a relatively small and relatively affordable game. It's only about a hundred bucks, even at retail. It's only one map. It's going to have probably two count. I think it's two counter sheets, right? Two counter sheets um, and not a ton of special rules as we've seen. It's less than two pages of basic game rules. That said, it's not dumbed down in any way. There's no like rules taken out of here. This isn't GCACW starter kit or anything like that. It is full rules, a GCACW in all its goodness. Um, it just happens to be a relatively straightforward situation. Um, so with that in mind, like this one turn scenario, this is super compact. This would be a fantastic introductory scenario. This is scenario one, Here Come the Rebels. It's a bit of an awkward title because there's a volume in the series called Here Come the Rebels. Uh, anyway, scenario three is the two turn scenario. Scenario four is We Will Make the Fight. Two turns on November 30th and December 1st of 1864. And here's here we have Franklin, which Battle of Franklin happens in this campaign as well. I don't know about that scenario, but... Uh, in the camp. It, it does happen during the, this Tennessee campaign. Uh, the enemy was badly whipped four turns, December 4th through the 7th, and this does not look particularly large. Scenario 6, the Battle of Nashville. This is two turns. It's a lot of nice compact little scenarios. And Scenario 7, Hood's Retreat, which is three turns, December 17th through the 19th. Uh, scenario 8, That Devil Forest, two turns. Is this a cavalry scenario? Uh, it does look like this is a largely cavalry scenario, which has a very different flavor than other GCACW scenarios. One of the strengths of the series is its handling of cavalry, which are used in this game system the way cavalry was used historically in the American Civil War, to screen and to scout, rather than to conduct cavalry charges and stuff like that. You can do that, but it, boy, it's super risky. Uh, and then we have advanced game rules. Let's see how much advanced game stuff we have. It's probably not all that much. So four pages, five pages, six pages. The, the, the advanced rules will start to include rules like supply and replacements. Um, and a lot of times the reinforcement rules will be more complicated than just an arrival schedule. Uh, and then here is the advanced game scenario. Uh, which has fairly extended victory conditions and quite a, quite a bit of troops. It's one map, um, but there's, there's a lot going on here. This is a lot of forces for, for GCACW. You're not activating, it's not an I go, you go system. It's an initiative-based system. You're activating a specific thing to move on the map, which could be a single unit or it could be a group of units. Um, but it is an initiative tick based system. Um, and then we have the game is history. This is a feature that uh, it's by Chris Withers in this case, uh, who is one of the, I don't want to misstate this, but he's one of the team that works on GCACW. Um, this is a Joe Belkowski innovation that uh, I have always really, really liked, where it is a walkthrough of the history in the context of the game, and that's fantastic. Plus, here's a map gazetteer with actual pictures. Uh, one of the nice things about American Civil War battles is, in a lot of cases, we can go to these places and, and see what it looks like. And maybe it, maybe it doesn't look exactly like it did back in the 1860s, but sometimes it does. Okay, so here we have one counter sheet. And here we have uh, version 1.4 of the standard basic game rules. The advanced rules are always in the game-specific rules, as it were. Uh, but these are the basic rules, and we're up to about 24 pages here. This book has actually gotten, gotten more concise as things have been reprinted as some of the game-specific things that used to have to appear in the basic rules because the game was out of print back since Avalon Hill went out of business. A lot of that stuff's in the game-specific rules for those games now for things like Roads to Gettysburg 2. Um, 
So I don't think, I have 1.3 of course from the last round of games. I am reasonably sure that the changes between 1.3 and 1.4 are entirely trivial in scope. Um, so, and this is on the same paper stock as the other one, by the way. And again, it's 24 pages on the, the shiny stock. Um, we have a player aid card. We have the second counter sheet. We'll talk, we'll look at the counters in detail in a minute. We have the second player aid card. We have one map, which we will lay out here in a moment. And we have a die that just fell on the floor. The traditional multi-man publishing blank piece of paper, if you're appearing here for no discernible reason. Um, we have a TEC. These are not always the same for every volume in the series, but a lot of times they're pretty similar. On the back of that, we have some more terrain information. Uh, we have two force display cards. This is how far war is handled. And on, we also have a turn track, a movement track, and victory points track on this. Generally speaking, most players won't need to use the movement track, but it does depend in a, in a big scenario with a lot of forces and where you have multiple units activating at a time, it can be useful. The force display is essentially the way a fog of war is handled in this series, and it is an optional rule, I believe, but I do recommend playing with it in any anything other than an introductory scenario. Okay, so the two... General player aid cards have the combat chart on the front, some movement stuff on the back. Uh, this is the stuff that is most commonly used. Um, and then some information on the inside about sequence of play, but this is just for the advanced game. Um, this is probably all advanced game stuff, it looks like it. And then some information on retreat and flank attacks. These are key mechanics in the series. Uh, almost all of the time you'll be using either this or this, uh, mostly, mostly that. Uh, and sometimes this too, because you're going to need to do extended marches. So we have two of those. Again, there are two counter sheets. These are on the now standard white core stock that Multiman uses, but, the, but it's a little thicker than this stuff used to be. Um, and in this case, we have one sheet of units and leaders, and then one with, with a bunch of markers, and then one sheet of the manpower markers, the fatigue markers, and some other miscellaneous markers for forts and breastworks and stuff like that. So it does sound like we do have uh, field works in this scenario. And in fact, we have this abatus, uh, ab abatus, I don't know how that is supposed to be pronounced. <clears throat> And we've got some markers for uh, units that don't activate necessarily on the first turn as well. Um, we can see offhand that the one of the union leaders here is George Thomas. Uh, Stanley Schofeld, having trouble reading it, Smith, Milroy, Wilson, Hatch, R. Johnson, Knipe, McCook, and Long. And then for the Confederates, of course, we have John Bell Hood. Uh, Stewart, which I think is not Jeb Stewart, it's another Stewart. Uh, Lee, I wonder if that is Fitzhugh Lee, possibly, who was, I believe, a nephew of Robert E. Lee. Uh, Cheatham, uh, we have, of course, William Bedford Forrest, Chalmers Buford, not that Buford, Jackson, Roddy, and Adams, and then a bunch of individual, uh, looks like mostly brigades, but a couple of divisions for the Confederates, and mostly divisions and a few brigades for the Union. And some special markers for various things, like dismounted cavalry, for example, which is interesting. It, I'd be curious to see the rule for that. Um, that is something that uh, may have appeared in Roads to Gettysburg, actually. Uh, and then let's take a look at the map. Uh, I am of the opinion, which has not been, I have not been let down here yet, that the Great Campaigns of the American Civil War series has the most beautiful maps in all of wargaming. Um, I see nothing to change my mind here today. Although you won't be able to see all of it in the frame, and I apologize for that, it's just where the camera is at this moment. Here we have the town of Franklin, here's Spring Hill, here's Columbia, uh, and down in the corner where you probably cannot see it is Murfreesboro, and Nashville is at the extreme, I'm trying to get it into the camera, it's, it's right on the right-hand side of the map. So, 
It's right over here is the biggest town on the map. So there's a, there's a lot of, and you can see there's a lot of open space here, a lot of open terrain uh, scattered by a few, with a few woods. And then this whole area is kind of ringed with woods. Uh, there's a couple little ridge, uh, ridges of hills, but this is mostly a flat map. So it's going to be really interesting to see how uh, these scenarios play out. Um, you will absolutely be seeing more content on Hood Strikes North from this channel. Uh, I do recommend a, another YouTube channel called Patrick's Tactics and Tutorials that's run by Patrick Pence, who has pretty much completely dedicated his channel to the Great Campaigns, the American Civil War series, and who has done a lot of material on Hood Strikes North already. I will put a link to Patrick's channel in the video description, so please do check that out. If you have found the video insightful, entertaining, or useful, please do give it a thumbs up, and please do subscribe to the channel and click the little bell icon to get notified when new content comes out. If you'd like to help support Ardwolf Slayer, please do check out the links to the Patreon and merch store in the video description. Until next time, thank you very much for watching, and happy wargaming!